What's up, people? Welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the YouTube channel where we dissect, where we literally dissect the minds of top thought leaders and experts so we can learn from them the success principles that they have applied to achieve extraordinary results. All we have to do is follow in the footsteps and create the same extraordinary results for ourselves. I'm Talal, your host, and tonight I am joined by Rich Bontrager. I hope I haven't butchered the name. I did ask before how to pronounce it, uh, and, and hopefully I'll, I've, I've got it right. But I'm, I'm joined by Rich. He is uh, phenomenal. He uh, was a pastor. He was also a broadcaster, but now he's a motivational speaker. Um, he's a coach, and he is to a to be author. He's he's writing his book as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And the specific. Uh, kind of theme that we'll be talking about today is how do you define the arts? How do you actually find the motivation and inspiration uh, to to move forward when life throws obstacles and adversity your way? When you face those hard times in your life, the dark times in your life, how do you move past them? His nickname is The Trigger. So with that, let's welcome Rich to the show. Rich, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm a you know, very happy to be here to share this whole story, the whole journey I've been on. Uh, it's not a straight line. It's a wandering, mysterious thing. Uh, but overall, life is a great adventure. And that's my number one message. People can actually have a life that's a great adventure, even though life sometimes, like you said, has winding curves and it's not always perfect, but you don't have to give up, man. Awesome. And I love the message. And for people in the audience, have you ever faced dark times in your life? Have you faced hardship and adversity where you thought the walls are closing in? You, you don't see a way out. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. How am I going to get through this? When things got so bad where you started to question your own sanity, like, am I going crazy here? What, what, why am I going through this? Why me? Have you ever asked those questions to yourself? If so, then this conversation is going to be for you. And maybe, hey, you might be going through that sort of time right now, or you might know somebody who's going through that time right now. Then share this conversation with those people. Because this whole show is dedicated towards helping you accelerate your lives, which is why I bring on amazing guests like Rich, so we can learn from them. Rich got an amazing story. So let's get into that. Rich, let's talk about your story and your journey. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started on this journey. You have an amazing story about how you were young, you had a stutter and you overcame that. And recently you've, you've gone through a liver transplant and you've, you've survived that. Uh, and, and you've got a big smile on your face despite everything. So, you know, that's, that's fantastic. Tell us more about it. Well, actually I should be dead three times. Uh, that's all wow. part of the story. Uh, I was born with a uh, disease called CMV. Uh, and the doctors literally told my parents, your son will die. After a week, they still told my parents, your son will die. After three weeks, they said, take your kid home. He will die. But we don't need him here at the hospital. Where he's taking up bed space. And here I am 53 years later, still alive. That was the beginning of defying the odds in my life. Um, yeah, then I grew up with a horrible stutter. Um, there's a lot of embarrassment. There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of awkwardness. Um, I could not even ask girls out growing up. Okay. My stutter was so bad growing up. If I wanted to ask a girl out, I would blow it. They would giggle and tell their other girlfriends. And so my self-worth, my self-image, um, where I'm an A-type personality now, I was not an A-type personality back then at all. Uh, I was a shell of a cowardice individual way more confident now. Uh, I went through a burn accident at the age of 10, caught on fire. Uh, I should have died then, or at least been blind for sure. The doctor said he'll probably be blind. Uh, I remember the incident in vivid technicolor to this day. And then just uh, the last five years of my life has been put on hold. You talk about those dark times. You were talking about those, those times when everything closes in, all those questions of why, when, what's going to change, will it ever change? Um, liver disease for five years, came out of nowhere, didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't chew, didn't go with girls that do, none of those things that they tell you. Uh, my liver just gave up. They found the liver, 
it was already 75% dead and gone, never coming back. And they said, you're living on a liver at 25%. You should be in excruciating pain. You have a very short lifespan left. Get your affairs in order. And last year, March 25th, 2017, I got the greatest gift of life. I got a new liver. Uh, and the doctor said, you will have some disabilities. You'll have some leftovers. You're not going to come back to the full you. And I said, watch me. Uh, and now I'm back being the old rich. I feel like a 35 year old guy who thinks I can still take on the world. That's just a snapshot. And through it all, I've learned a lot of amazing things of how to motivate, how to stay on mission and purpose, how to not give up. Because there were many days I did not want to crawl out of bed. There were many days I literally wanted to watch Netflix mm -hmm. and binge watch and binge watch and binge watch. And finally I said enough. Um, so it can be done. It really can be done. The trick is you have to want to fight for it, make plans. And there are, uh, what I feel are life lessons that I can help other people. And that's why I travel and speak now. Fantastic. That's beautiful, Rich. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And you're absolutely right. There are dark times that we all face. It, it, it happens to everybody. And you have a choice at that point. You can take the easy road, which is Netflix, binge watch Netflix, eat a lot of Hagen Dazs ice cream, right? Do yeah. go down that road. Um, and, or worse, like, you know, people get addicted to drugs or, you know, they have developed a drinking problem, etc. Like, you know, the, the, we, 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 we can go down and, and, you know, come up with lots of examples where the easy road takes you down a dark path. Yeah. Or, you choose a war path. Yeah. You actually don't give up. You keep plowing through, even though you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Where you remind yourself every single day what your purpose is. Why you must get through it. So what I'm actually, sorry, sorry, I wasn't cutting you off. So go on. No, no, on. One of the questions I ask people very often when, when you describe that perfectly, by the way, is... How much fight do you have in you? Hmm. Uh, because you have to choose to fight for your life. Literally, in cases like mine and many others, you have to decide, I'm going to fight. Uh, my life is worth living. You have to decide, this is a life that's worth living. Uh, I see life as a great adventure. Even though there's been, been many dips and valleys, highs and lows, I think it's a great adventure. I want to go out and kick butt, take names, have fun, uh, and life is a great adventure. And that's part of the mental side of this. And you have to figure out, I'm going to fight. Like post-transplant, for example, I was up walking 24 hours after transplant. Wow. I walked out of the hospital five days later with no hand apparatus, no walking cane, hands free after a transplant, five days after major, major life-changing surgery. Wow. You have to decide to walk. You have to decide to push. You have to decide to take that next step and not do one lap around the nurse's station, but do two laps around the nurse's station, get the four laps. And you have to decide you're going to fight for your life again. There's a lot of that that people need to understand. There are ways to do that. And you don't have to curl up, check out, commit suicide, drink, give up, whatever it is. Uh, there are ways I think you can do it. I'm not alone. Many others have done it. Uh, but they need to hear the message of hope. Mm, yeah. So Rich, tell us about some of the ways that you can actually go ahead and fight and, and, you know, move past that, the, the sort of, uh, dark cloud that's chasing you everywhere where you are just feeling overwhelmed by everything. And you just want an escape. You just want it to stop. You just want a break, but that break's not coming. There is no stop. There is no pit it's not a pit stop where you can go and, and slow down. You have to plow through. So what do we do? Well, the first thing is, and you've had other guests talk about this, this is not a new angle, this at all, but you have to have a purpose. Mm. Every day you have to wake up and say, I have a mission, I have a purpose. There's a reason that I exist, that I breathe, and I'm not done yet. Um, mine was public speaking. Mine was serving and investing in other people. Mine has always been, whether I've been a pastor or a sports broadcaster, I love people. I love serving people, and I've been blessed and fortunate to have a microphone to go out and share and communicate that. And so you have to have a purpose. You have to have something that says, I'm not finished yet. It's not over. 
Um, I have more work to be done because when we give up that sense of purpose and passion, uh, when, when the next day doesn't matter, we do spiral to a very dark, ugly place. But if you keep telling yourself, today I have one mission to accomplish. Now, that mission may change for a while. That mission may go from a public full-time job, like in my case, to my mission was, can I walk two miles today? Mm. Can I walk a mile as my health got worse? Can I walk a quarter mile around the outside pond around my house where I live? And your purpose changes, but you still need to find a purpose. And that's a big shift for a lot of people that don't understand. As the world closes in, the big thing is find a new purpose. There's always something that you can find to cling to, to fight for, to invest in. Um, one of the other things I began to do for my creative side was I went to my laptop because I can't go travel. I really can't drive. Uh, and I began to write movie scripts. I began to use my creative juices to learn how to write. As you said, I'm working on a book. Scares me to death to write a book. <laughs> but I'm trying to learn how to do it. And through my liver disease, through this time out of life, I began to invest in that side. And that was a new purpose for me. Hmm. First of all, you know, your, your whole story about surviving the fire uh, and getting past the stutter and, and moving from, you know, a, a very sort of a personality where, like you said, you wouldn't describe it as an A-type personality to actually becoming an A-type personality later in your life. Uh, and then, you know, surviving your, your liver transplant. I think it's just absolutely phenomenal that you were able to get past all those things. Um, and, you know, individually, they they are, you know, monumental as it is, but together it, it's, it's just incredible how you actually got past those things. Um, and I, I, first of all, actually want to share a little bit of my story. I mean, there's, I, you know, I've, I've, I've gone through dark times in my life. I, I, I come from a really kind of broken family and, uh, you know, I, I grew up pretty dysfunctional and broken and, you know, all that awesome stuff. Um, but it was for me sometimes just, I need to just get through today. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. Just need to get through today. Just, just today. Just this hour. Just this, you know, just this next thing. I just need to get through this. Can I just fight through this? That's all I have to do. Forget about everything else. And sometimes that's what kind of kept me going. And I, I asked other people, when times have been dark, what strategies did you use that kind of got you through? Because if you're facing any dark times now, or if you you know, face any darker times in the future, then those are the things that will get you through again. And that was one of the things for me. So I just thought I'd share that. But I, yeah. I totally agree with you. You know, having a purpose is, is essential. And, uh, you know, it's also the fact that, you know, having connecting with all these amazing people that I've had on the show, one of the things that they talk about always is don't just have a purpose, have a purpose that's bigger than you. And yeah. you said like your purpose was to go and serve others, right? It wasn't just the fact that I want to make some money. I want to, you know, uh, get healthy. It's the fact that I want to be healthy so I can go and serve others. I want to be on the road and speak and motivate others and inspire others so they can defy the odds and move past the obstacles that they're facing and, and you know, make sure that they don't give up. So that's, that was your purpose, right? Yeah, very so, much, yes. Yeah. So my, my question really is, Rich, like, how do you find that purpose that's bigger than you? Is, is there some sort of formula? Is there some sort of path that we, all, we can all walk to find that bigger purpose? Uh, man, I really wish there was. I mean, it would make this whole journey of life thing a lot easier. Wouldn't it? If there was an owner's manual to say, you're born here, this is your purpose. You were born on this date, here's your purpose. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, I've been fortunate to have some mentors, some people invest in me. Uh, to me, that's part of it. Uh, to me, faith plays a big part of this as well, is the faith journey. Whatever you believe, your faith, your spirituality, I think is a big part of finding a sense of purpose. Uh, from a higher power, from, from, from the word, from the scriptures, whatever you get into. And overlaying those together, I think, really helps a lot of it. But then you have to have people reinforce it. Because you can come up with a crazy, crazy idea and say, I think I'm supposed to do this. And if everyone is saying no, 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 sometimes the no means no. And sometimes, like in my case, I was told, you stutter. You have a great voice. 
but you're never going to be a broadcaster, Rich. No one's going to pay you to be a broadcaster. Now, what I learned through that was my professor was right when he said, you'll never be a broadcaster. I'm not going to be Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite. I don't do hard news well. I get all emotional. Um, I don't like reading about death and destruction and wars and famines. But when I got into the sports side and could ad lib and be free flowing and use my passion and my laughter and tell a great story, I can make a career out of this. And for 25 years, I've been a sports broadcaster, not a news journalist, but a sports broadcaster. So that no was a no, but that no redirected me to another angle. And now the college professor laughs at me and says, I was wrong, you were right, and you found your purpose in your way. And to me, that's a lot of it is you need to push through some of those no's. You need to find that purpose. My faith helped me do that. My attitude of never say die helped me do that. And my curiosity, much like yours, we talked about this, you have a very curious mind. I was curious as to why does my tongue fail? What are the words that trip me up? Um, how can I learn to get past those tricks? When I began to investigate that and learn those, I now know how to avoid those words and how to do this and do it really well. And those are some of the mysteries. So, so there's no manual, like you said. There's no instruction book to this. There's a lot of self-learning. I had to decide to go learn myself. Uh, my mother has a huge stutter. So actually separating myself from my mom as I went out to college helped my stutter get better. Those, I love my mom. But if I get around my mom, I will stutter. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, learning about yourself helps you with your purpose and mission, I think. Mm. See, that's so interesting you said that. Because I, I have, a, again, a, just just... A, a theory you could say that I have uh, been thinking about and that is that when it comes to finding your purpose and your passion and people talk about all these things you have to you know go and 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 dedicate yourself to one thing and then try something else and see what works and what doesn't work and what where your interest is and where your abilities are and where your creativity flows and it's like in the you know cross section of all of those things etc and, and 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 you know that's that's that might be absolutely true but i think for me it's where you go and you find a way where you are actually able to naturally apply your strengths to serve others. And I think that's quite a simple way of putting it rather than actually drawing Venn diagrams with like crossover sections and all sorts of other stuff and labeling all those bits. I think it's quite a simple way where you can find, you can use your strengths to just serve others. And I think that's where you really start to see your purpose that yes, you might be going through a dark time in your life, but there are other people who actually can use your help because there might be other things that they're suffering from that you ha actually know how to help them with. Yeah. Right? So you can oh, see yeah, what help them with those things. And when you start to go and see other people, and sometimes you know you find people who are in, in worse scenarios than, than you are, then you really start to get a different perspective on things. And that's also really important, like having a different perspective on things. Um, so for example, a lot, a lot of the times I think about the fact that, Hey, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, wallowing in self pity, like poor me. Um, and, and some of it might be justified, like, you know, stuff, stuff, you know, serious stuff might've happened, but there might be children in the hospital who are suffering from cancer or serious diseases, or there might've been an accident. Like you talked about the burn accident and how are they feeling? How are their parents feeling right now? And I'm, I'm kind of think, sitting there thinking, well, actually, if I knew some of these people, I, I could probably go and spend some time with those guys and make them feel better. Just, just be there for them. That's all I want to do. Yeah. And, and speaking about the burn, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Go on. No, no, I was going to say, speaking about the burn, because that's a great segue into one of the things I, I, I did learn. Remember, I'm 10 years old with this burn accident. I'm in a hospital. Um, during that time, there was a train accident, and a young boy came to my room to visit me. Mm. He lost his legs in this train accident. Wow. About the same age. So here I'm in a burn ward, 
he's got no legs in a wheelchair and we're laughing and joking and playing cards and learning how to have a good time in spite of our circumstance. Now I'm looking at him honestly going, he'll never play football. He'll never run. He'll never do that. I'm thinking poor, poor him. He's looking at me with all my bandages and all the gauze and everything else thinking poor, poor him. I'm going to go help him out. It's amazing what happens when people are in that pain and that crucible of being tested and tried. People don't look at their situation as the worst anymore. They look at other people, and we have a natural tendency to bring hope and light and joy and laughter. I find it's amazing that people do that for each other mm. when really their situation stinks. But somehow it takes them out of that, and now they help other people. They serve other people in spite of their condition. And it did happen in my own burn situation. There I was, but he came to have a good time with me. And we found a very common camaraderie in our pain sitting mm. in the hospital room. That's so powerful. And yeah, I, 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 I can relate to that because a lot of the times I think about those stuff and I'm just like, they're, they're people who have gone through, you know, horrible, just absolutely unspeakable things have happened to them. Right. And I'm kind of sitting here being sad about this thing. And yes, it might be serious, but what if I could just be there for them and just give them a hug? Right. How awesome would that make me feel? And then how awesome would it be for that person to know that there's somebody who's thinking about them, who just cares for them. Right. Yeah. So th that's, that's, that's like the process that I kind of go through and that like, that's my theory on that. And I just, just thought I'll share because we're, we're, we're talking about this right now. Um, but yeah, I, I have to say, first of all, I absolutely agree with the fact that you gotta have a purpose to remind yourself, like, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you alive? Why are you here? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it, it, I think the two amazing things you talked about there was like, you know, if you can't, your purpose might change. So go and find a new purpose, right? Like it might not be the one purpose that lasts you for the rest of your life, right? If, if that's the case, awesome, but it might not be the case for you. So go find a new purpose. And I love that because a lot of the times purpose seems to be kind of talked about as if it's a destination that once you reach it, everything else will be okay and easy, but it's not, it's a journey, right? Like you, you it might change. It, it might shift. Your focus might shift. And the second thing you mentioned there was creativity that if you're struggling, then, you know, go do something creative, right? So I absolutely love that. I want to just kind of highlight those uh, things for the audience. Um, what are some of the other things? So you need to know your purpose. Um, what, what other things do we need to be doing, Rich? Uh, one of the other things I think, keep your humor. And it's so hard in those dark times. People <laughs> say, yeah. They want to pull down the shades. They want to pull up the covers. Mm. And humor is the last thing on their mind. But again, going to my recent liver transplant, um, I checked in the hospital and I've got a quirky humor. I, I love the tease and joke. I'm sarcastic. So this nurse comes in and she gives me the gown and, and she says, okay, now I have to put something on your bum. And I'm like, okay. And she's got this British accent. And she said, now you're going to be in bed for several days. So, and she showed me this giant O-ring, this cushy O-ring. So she gives me the gown, told me to go change and get into this, come back. And this is the night before my transplant. Right. She comes out and says, now, just lift up your gown a little bit. And I'm like, I've been in the hospital so many times. I just pull up my gown, whip it up. She starts laughing. She goes, slaps it on there, pats my bum. And I'm laughing and she's laughing. And her comment was, I own your bum for the week. This is my bum. No one gets to touch it. I find that offensive. I think it's the funniest thing in the world. Well, that's awesome, Rich. And I, you're right. You know, it's sometimes during those hard times, humor is what kind of gets you through. So it is important. And they say, you know, laughter is, is the best medicine, isn't it? Right. At the end yeah. of the day, they, <laughs> they, that's that saying is there for a reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Find the humor. Embrace the humor. Don't be embarrassed of it. Um, see, people might look at you funny, but again, in many hospital rooms and many hospital lobbies, you sit there for hours. I've had some of the most funny crack up moments in those lobbies. And it actually is contagious. Laughter and joy is contagious and it is good for the soul. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And so we've got, we, we need to remind ourselves of purpose. We need to have humor in our lives and joy. Is there anything else we need to be doing? I think, uh, again, between the hope 
and between words of affirmation. I, I think there's, again, going back to the idea of all the no's in our life, we hear so many no's. I believe we need to affirm people. I need to be lift people up. Instead of hearing no so often, I think we need to say yes more, encourage people more, and then help them find what that yes is. Um, again, I may be a public speaker now, but I started off as a broadcaster. I was a pastor. The microphone has been the common thread, but the, the microphone is different now than it was then. And the affirmation to go try the platform, the affirmation to go try writing a book about my life and sharing the defining the odds, uh, the whole tagline of defining the odds. I've been looking for a title for years. It came from a good friend of mine who finally gave me the tagline for it. Mm. So the affirmation, the hope that you can take the next thing, it will happen. I think we need to do a much better job of A, giving it to people, being affirming, caring, supportive people, and we need to be willing to receive it. When you're in those dark clouds, the last thing you want to hear is you can do it. The last thing you want to hear is I believe in you. Um, I know because I, I turned people away from some of that and had to learn how to accept the encouragement and the affirmation. Um, so learning to embrace it and learning to give it, I think, are two big things there. Mm, yeah. And for people in the audience, um, I, I'm going to turn to you. I'm going to ask you this. If you are going through dark times right now, or if you know somebody else is going through dark times, uh, and especially if you are experiencing the lowest of the low, where you are questioning your existence, where you're questioning whether you should carry on living, and you're having those really sort of dark thoughts, you know, uh, and, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about suicidal thoughts. And if, if, if it's that bad and you've, you know, going through depression and all sorts of stuff, well, first of all, you know, you need to go and seek help. You need to talk to, you know, medical professionals, etc. And I will highly encourage you to go and do that. Okay. Me and Rich, uh, we're, we're here to serve you guys, but get, again, we're not medical professionals, right? So make sure you go ahead and talk to your medical professional, your doctor, your physician, your GP, like whatever it is, you go and seek you know, actual medical help. But other than that, my question to you at this stage is, have you come this far in life only to come this far? Ask yourself that. Rich talked about not giving up. Rich talked about motivating yourself. Rich talked about having a purpose. But all of that boils down to this. You have to ask yourself, have I only come this far to only come this far? Absolutely not. You know the answer. So that's why, that's why you need to choose the war path. That's why you need to keep on grinding. That's why you need to carry on, even if you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. It does not matter. You're alive, you can breathe, which means you can fight. That's what Rich was talking about before. So choose the war path. Rich, some powerful stuff you shared with us. In terms of defying the odds, you have a very great track record of defying the odds. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, can you shed some light on that? Like how did you discover some of that stuff uh, for yourself? You talk about having mentors. So tell her about you know, how you found those mentors, how you connected with them, and what do they actually teach you that helped you defy the odds? Yeah, a lot of it really was after I began to learn that I wasn't worthless, I began to realize I had a mission and a purpose. I, I sought off some people, and then one particular sought me out. I, I, I had a pastor when I was in the burn ward um, who literally came every day. He had to scrub in and scrub out, reverse isolation to keep me from getting any disease and infection. He came every day as, a, as I was a 10-year-old boy, and he left me with a riddle every day. He got my mind re-engaged, even though I'm stuck in bed. We forged a friendship and a bond. He was the first one to talk about, you have a purpose, you have something worth giving back, even though you're stuck in bed. And we began to talk and dream, and he was the first one to feed real positive. My, my dad did not do that at a young age. My dad does much better now. But back then, my dad didn't know how to be that man of affirmation and believing and seeing in a futuristic mindset. Uh, Fred Finks was that man, and he did that every day, 
not only did it impact my life, my family's life was impacted by this man who came every day to see their son in a burn ward. Uh, so he coached me. He mentored me a little bit to help me begin to look beyond where I was at, what I'd become. He uh, had me be a leader in the youth group, even though I didn't feel like a leader in the youth group. And he sent me out on my first speaking uh, engagement one summer. He signed all the paperwork to make sure I went and actually didn't, didn't back out. Those are the type of people that I seek out. Um, we have a common friend, Corey, who's a TEDx speaker. I recently invested financially to improve my speaking platform. I feel I have a story to tell. I, I feel I'm a gifted speaker. Uh, but I want to bring that to a larger stage. TEDx, TED Talks are one of the areas to do that. And it unlocks a lot of doors. Now, again, like you said earlier, it's not about the money. I will do a lot of this for free, and I have, because I want to. I have a mission. But when you unlock those doors, the next door, the next phone call, the next opportunity comes. So I have said, Corey's one of those guys that has been there, done that, knows the ins and the outs. And I'm really going to cut some checks, swipe the credit card. And it's not like I'm going to him. This is all computer download. Technology today can help you so much. So I'm learning through him investing in myself as he's investing in me, investing in others. And I've intentionally gone looking for people like that, of uh, my speaking skills, my presentation skills. Now my writing skills, hey, if anyone is out there that can help me write my book, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a storyteller, I am not a writer. And so I'm now seriously beginning to figure out how to pull this off because like you, I'm a constant learner. I wanna enhance and learn. So. Those are some of the modern mentors. Uh, and the other one truly was a girlfriend. Uh, one of my favorite stories of talking about my stutter story was because I couldn't ask people out because I literally could not say my own name. Uh, we were dating and there were times when she would turn to me as I was trying to ask her out or take her to a movie and I just couldn't get the words. And she is the first person that could tease me and not have to be offensive. She's the first one that could actually encourage me to pause, take a breath. She started to help me learn these tricks of what the words were that tripped me up, the order of my words, the phrasing of my words. And she could actually do that in a way that I knew she valued me. She wanted me to do better. And the only way I was ever going to be able to ask her out if I got the dumb words out of my mouth or if she wanted to go out with me. And it became this game, this fun thing we did. And she really spent the time to help me get better at being me and getting comfortable with what some people call a defect and just embrace it and say, relax, you're just you and you're okay. That's a huge part of learning that and having those mentors, having that positive people around you and finding those and letting them have the freedom to do that in your life. I think it's huge to surround yourself with those type of honest people so they can build you up. Mm. So what I'm hearing you say, Rich, right now is that in the sort of uh, the formula for defying the odds, one of the key things is to surround yourself with positive people who uplift you, who motivate you, who drive you, who, who actually sh kind of bring out the best in you. Also, there's a phrase that I share is um, there's gold inside of everybody. Mm. Often we don't feel like there's gold inside of us. We don't believe there's that worth. I've worked with people uh, who fight drug addiction a lot. I've been counseling, mentoring. There's gold inside of all those people that have had broken, shattered lives. And when you begin to tell them there's gold, and we begin to mine that gold and find that gold and pull it out of you, their face changes. Their shoulders rise up. They begin to think they're mothers that can be mothers, that they're fathers that can be fathers. And when you begin to tell them there's gold inside of you, people did that in my life. They began to say there's something good and worthy of value. And when they mine that out and they begin to tell you and see a future beyond what you can see, it's like lightning in a bottle. I mean, you talk about a formula, you talk about something that works, it really lightens your load and it takes you to the what ifs. What if I could be a professional broadcaster? What if I could be a public speaker? When they start telling you, oh, you are, you just don't know it yet. Find the golden people, mine it out, and help them defy the odds. I, I think, I mean, again, 
people want to hear it. They want to know it. But we just don't do a good job at it. Mm. Well, Wish, we, we've so far talked a lot about, you know, how do you defy the odds and, uh, you know, what, what are the keys to, to the formula that you have to kind of put together for yourself if you want to defy the odds and motivate yourself and push forward. Um, and, and one of them is obviously you need to know your purpose. We talked a lot about that, etc. We talked about surrounding yourself with the right people, you know, all those things. But I'm also wondering, initially, when somebody's going through dark times and they just cannot even think straight, they find themselves in a space where they just want a moment's relief and that relief is just not coming. There's just constant suffering and constant pain. They don't know where to turn. The, the, the dark times are really, truly dark. And yeah. they almost find that, you know, going, finding, finding themselves going down the path of binge watching Netflix or worse. What are some of the few steps they can do to stop going down that path? Number one for me was admit it. Mm. Literally admit it. Um, I had to pick up the phone. I had to uh, let my wife, my children at the time know the cloud is coming in and I'm not thinking clearly. Um, even though I had that positive outlook, I had to admit that there were many days where it didn't make sense. There was all those dark clouds and negative thoughts. I had to call some other friends and, and get advice. Do I stay on the path in the direction as my health is getting worse? I mentally and emotionally thought I could do it. But also part of me was the reality is you can't do it at the level you once did. And so for me, it was learning that I can't do it at that level, have, have call them and say, I need help figuring this out. I don't have it figured out. I can fake it, but it will literally physically kill me. Um, for some of us, that's mental. It can mentally just crush you and kill you. Some of us, it is a physical thing. It's not a sign of weakness to say, I need help. It is the, probably the best thing in your life to admit, I need help. Make a phone call, go out to lunch with somebody, and get gut level real. Now, pick those people carefully, uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong. I think it's the healthiest thing to do. So that's, that's step one. Again, for me, my faith was huge. I do not believe I'm an accident. I do not. I was, I, I, I believe I was born for a reason on planet earth. So my faith, praying, reading, studying, just meditating, just getting away and saying, I need to have a different frame of mind. Help me change that frame of mind because I cannot do it by myself. Mm. Um, and listening to uplifting music. I'm, I'm big on music. I'm big on finding things to read. Um, Music and story are big in my life. So I want to find inspirational stories. I want to find uplifting stories. And that changes it as I'm praying, as I'm meditating, um, going for a walk in the woods. You know how healthy it is to get outdoors and get out of the bedroom where the TV is and the blankets are and just get outside and say, it's fresh air. The birds are alive. I'm alive. And speak to me. Uh, those are some of the, 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 the things that helped me. And I think uh, no matter where you're at in that spectrum, I, I think they do translate into other situations very, very easily. Um, and when, when I had the liver disease, when I was fighting that, uh, the biggest help I got was from my, my brother. I literally moved from Minnesota to Georgia, where I'm at now, so I could go to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, an hour away, because they have the best transplanted people in all the world. I literally uprooted my life and moved halfway across the United States, moved in with my brother that I haven't lived with since high school. And he said, I will be your caregiver because there's going to come a point where you can't do it anymore. I had to admit it. And not just admit it when I needed it, admit it in advance so we were prepared to get there so he could drive me there the night they call and say, we have a donor, you have a new liver, can you get here? Those are the things I think are very practical. That's not a sign of weakness. I needed it. I had to admit it. And I had to make action steps and make it become a reality. I totally agree. And, you know, ad admitting it being the first part. And, you know, I think that's, that's huge. That's like halfway there, right? You admit the fact that this is what's going on. Uh, and you accept it. So I think that's, that's huge. Uh, and the second thing you talked about, and, and 
It could be the hardest thing that you do, but changing your environment, right? Changing your surroundings. You are the product of your environment. So, you know, change your environment. And, uh, you know, I, I, have a, I have a very sort of uh, different sort of definition for environment rather than a traditional environment, which is like, you know, home, work, you know, outside, indoors, you know, those sort of things. I think anything you come into contact with, anybody you come into contact with is an environment. Your toothbrush is an environment. Your phone is an environment. Your clothes are an environment. Your car is an environment. The food you eat, it, the, 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 the kind of stuff you surround yourself with, the music you listen to, like everything is an environment, right? So you need to change your environments in those times to really allow yourself to kind of gather your thoughts and, and kind of, you know, give yourself the space to think. Um, and I actually, I actually wrote um, an, an article on it, uh, you know, how to, how to bounce back from failures and crises. And for people who are interested in what I'll do is I'll put the link below in the description. It's absolutely free. You can download and, and, and you, can, you can read it, check it out. It's, it's not too long. Uh, it's not very, you know, scientific or anything like that. Although there's, I talk about some scientific stuff there, but it's very focused towards self-care. Like, what do you go through, you know, for your self-care during those dark times? Uh, and it's based on everything that I have practiced myself and everything that I have found useful. So, you know, the, the link will be below in the description. So go check it out if you're interested. Um, By the way, that self-care, just for a second, that self-care is huge. Mm. If you don't take care of yourself, first and foremost, nobody else will. If you're not willing to invest in yourself and set up those boundaries, change those environments, like you said, if you're not going to show that you're willing to do that, why would anybody else make the same investment? So your self-care is huge. That's exactly dead on. And it's part of that attitude, that mind shift of I have to, I get to, I want to. This is part of the challenge and, and treat it as such. Um, but yeah, your self-care is so very, and again, learning to say no. It's okay to say no, I can't today. Your self-care is telling you Warning, danger, if I press this too far, it's going to get worse. Self-care is a big, big factor. Great point. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I had uh, an amazing guest on the show before. Her name is Kay Sanders, and I still remember this. And we were talking about this whole kind of self-care and, and, you know, kind of making sure that you have time to yourself to, to kind of rejuvenate yourself, et cetera. And she said something so powerful that I remember to this day, it's one of the things that I've you know, written down in like the, the top lessons I have learned by you know, connecting with top people. And she said, the time that you take out, think of yourself as a gift. It's a gift. You're gifting yourself that time. You won't do it otherwise. You just won't because you'll always find an excuse. So she said, gift yourself that time. That's your gift to yourself. So it, it was absolutely huge. And, and it, it kind of goes hand in hand with what we've been discussing about self-care and stuff. But you, yeah, she was absolutely right. You do find excuses, right? Like there's, this won't get done or that won't happen or you know, the world will catch on fire. The universe will implode. Like you can't come up with any excuses. But that self-care is super important, especially in times of those dark times, the, the times of crises and failures and when you are feeding down and, you know, like we talked about, the, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You need time to yourself. Just look after yourself so you can go back in the fight. Retreat is not a bad word. Mm. We've heard retreat as a negative word. The actual origin of retreat was in a military term. You would retreat to regroup so that you would not lose the battle. And you would go back out with a new game plan, reorganize the troops, and advance again. So the idea of retreat for yourself is not a bad concept. You're mm. just regrouping to go do battle another day. And for many of us that have gone through dark times, it's a battle. Let's be real. It's a very real battle and war. Every hour, every day, every week becomes tougher and tougher as your life goes down. It's okay to go take a retreat. Retreat relax, get refreshed, and come back out, ready to go do it again. Awesome. I just came up with that super cool, awesome hashtag that you guys can use for this interview. It's called retreat, not defeat. 
Okay, go for it. Hashtag retreat, not defeat. Okay, that's what we're gonna go with. So, um, Rich, um, I quickly wanted to just discuss one more thing, which was a lot of the times where people go through these talks. I mean, I know I, I went through this myself. We have we we go through an identity crisis, where you are kind of thinking, well, this is not who I am. This is not how I, I, I pictured myself, or this is not where I wanted to be. This is not what my, my, how I envisioned my future, or this is not how I thought I would be dealing with something bad, uh, or this is not how I thought I would be feeling. What's wrong with me? Am I broken? Uh, and you start to almost question everything about yourself. And I think that actually is a very slippery slope and you can, you can go down and hit rock bottom really quite quickly if you keep focusing on that. So I'm wondering if you have any tips or any ideas with, uh, for us about how you can get through the identity crisis or how you can avoid the identity crisis in those dark times. Yeah, no, it, it, it is a real issue. Um, I went through it. The other part of my story I went through a divorce while I was going through liver disease. So oh, the whole wow. identity crisis is right there in the middle of it. Uh, was I a good husband? Was I a good father? Um, did my disease cause a divorce? Did I cause a divorce? Um, am I a good enough broadcaster? Did I make enough money? I mean, all of those identity issues. Uh, and then the question of, as I get worse, will I ever get back up again? And the identity was, I'm a public speaker. I'm a professional broadcaster. And they tell you, you're not going to recover well. So can I ever do what I love to do ever again? And my identity really was wrapped up. You're absolutely right. Um, this may sound kind of weird, but I have a real vivid imagination. One of my other points I often talk about is your imagination will help you in so many ways. I'm going to geek out for a second. One of my all-time favorite heroes growing up was Captain Kirk from Star Trek, okay? <laughs> yeah. I love the hero. I love Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. I love the idea of imagining being that guy. So for me, part of my imagination was, and this is my identity now, but like in Lord of the Rings, you did not know Aragorn. Strider was the future king. Mm. You did not know that. You saw him as the ranger. He was something else. I have to wrap my, my mind around the idea just because I'm a professional speaker, broadcaster, I might be something else. My imagination has to still look for the hero, but the hero's not necessarily going to be the same guy he was when he was 20, when he was 30. And so instead of seeing it as a deficiency of, of oh, bad, pitiful, poor me, um, I have to turn it into who am I becoming? Not as a deficiency of you didn't hit the mark, you'll never hit the mark again. Who am I being transformed into? What is that new thing I'm becoming? And embrace that and find the new story in that. We, we all have our story. My story has been a lot of dysfunction, pain, hardship. But out of every one of those peaks and valleys, if you go to a movie, there's always those peaks and valleys. The hero comes out with a new story on the backside. Can you have that imagination? Can you think that way? Can you feel that just because your self-worth was wrapped up in that career, in that city, with those people, does that mean your self-worth is always going to be in that thing? Maybe it's over here. Maybe you need to go find that new thing and embrace that and say, that was a great part of my story, but here's the next part of my story. And mm. as a storyteller, my imagination has got to work that way. That's just how I'm worried. I'm, I'm looking for the next chapter of the story. See, that's beautiful because I think you, you highlighted something really important. And for people in the audience, I, I think this is critical. The fact that during those dark times, during when, when you're going through crises and failures in your lives, the key thing to remember is that it's just another chapter of your story. It's going to end. There's going to be an end to it. It's not going to carry on indefinitely forever. But that does not mean that you are somebody who is completely different. It's just something that you're going through temporarily. You're still the same person. You still had all those experiences in the past, all the awesome experiences, right? It's just something you're going through in the moment. 
and that moment will eventually pass. And I love that. That's beautiful advice. Um, hashtag Lord of the Ring rocks, by the way. Uh, so yeah, hashtag Lord of the Ring rocks. There you go. Second hashtag of the interview. Rich, something that I didn't uh, tell you before, uh, I thought I'll just say to you, this is actually going to be the 100th video of the, the, the show, right? So this is going to be the 100th that I'm doing. Yes. Um, I think we are, we've covered some really um, amazing stuff in this interview and i'm really glad to have you on to you know we we, we went down some really interesting rabbit holes uh, and i hope that it adds a lot of value to a lot of people um, but i'm just wondering since it's the 100th video i'm going to leave the floor open to you do you have any other advice for us the biggest advice is don't give up winston churchill shortest speech in the world greatest speech of one of the greatest speeches of all time was don't give up don't give up don't give up. And he sat down. And that was during wartime. Mm. Um, again, when you're defying the odds, please don't give up. When you think you're at your end, pick up that phone, reach out to somebody, use your imagination, believe there's something around the corner. Um, it may not be the same. Um, I never thought I would be traveling and speaking. I never thought I would write a book in my life. And here I am working on all these things and doing that. Again, it's the same skill set changed and modified because the story continues on in a different phase. Um, so again, I believe people can defy the odds. I believe there's greatness in people. I, I just want to encourage and help people. I, I, I want to be the biggest cheerleader in the stands. I want to be the biggest person up there going, woo, you did it. Uh, you rock and don't stop and watch people defy the odds. Um, if, if people have questions, do they want to reach out to me? You can do it at defytheodds at richbontrager.com. Uh, just send me a message. Uh, you can do that. Um, you know, it's easy to get a hold of me, uh, and I would love to hear your stories. In fact, part of my uh, ongoing stories is I want to highlight other stories now of people that defy the odds, not just my story. I think we need to get those messages out there of people that have defied the odds. Like a young boy that was born with a childhood disease who was told he was never, ever, ever going to walk. He's walking. Yeah. He is walking. About the wheelchair kid who has done Special Olympics and he's an acrobat in his wheelchair doing better skateboarding tricks than most kids with two legs. Those are the stories I want to hear and I want to share. Again, part of that new purpose in life is it's not about me. There's other people that can inspire you. Know, I, I, I just want to get those stories out. So that's let's, ha, let's have fun telling these stories and getting them out there. And let's encourage people to not give up. There's another day coming around the corner. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, and Rich, are, are, are there any other ways that people can find you, learn more about you, or reach out to you? Yeah, I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, you can always find me on YouTube, Rich Trigger Bond Trigger. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Rich Trigger Bond Trigger. Uh, really, it's not hard. I've been on social media long enough as a broadcaster. Uh, you can probably Google me and find me pretty easy. Um, I've got a Twitter account, Instagram, all, all those usual things. Um, I'm also on Gig Salad uh, and Speaker Match. Those are speaking locations. So as I travel and book and try to get uh, places to come, you can always, uh, if you're looking for somebody to come speak, I would love to come travel. Uh, you know, we were talking before we get on the air. I'd love to come over the pond. I'd, I'd, I'd love to come over. Uh, I've rarely been out of the country, uh, except in family emergencies, to be honest. Uh, I would love to come and, and speak and share. So uh, if anyone has that interest, Google me, find me. Uh, and I, I would love to have that conversation about how I can share these stories. Fantastic. And for people in the audience, all those links will be below in the description of the video. So you can go hit those links and reach out to Rich directly. Um, Rich, how can we help you right now? Boy, uh, you're, you're, you're doing just by being on your show, spending this time. And again, uh, thanks. Let's give a shout out to Corey. Corey was the one that kind of bridged the gap. Uh, we, we kind of mentioned earlier, uh, and he is the speaker guy. Uh, again, this is what I think is the best thing about being in the speaker community. I think you'd probably echo that as well. Uh, speakers love to cheer each other on. We're having fun doing this. 
So I, I just appreciate that you would have me on. Uh, give me the time to share my story and fan it out through your network uh, and uh, see where it goes. You just never know where an interview goes. Uh, and again, you were recently interviewed on your show. Uh, now as a broadcaster being interviewed, it's, tra- it's really strange <laughs> to have the tables turned and learn all the responses and the interviewing techniques uh, it's fun and it's different. So again, I really thank you for giving me the time to be on the other side of the microphone for a change. Awesome. It's, it was a pleasure to have you on, Rich. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, Corey, he's our mutual friend. I've had him on the show previously. His full name is Corey Poirier. He's uh, an international uh, you know, best-selling author and an award-winning TEDx speaker, et cetera, et cetera. The list is huge. He's interviewed like the top 5,000 thought leaders in the world on his radio show. Um, I, the links will be below in the description for Corey's interviews as well. He's absolutely awesome. Corey, if you're watching, uh, love you, brother. Um, and there you go, guys. That was our conversation with Rich Trigger Bontrager. And uh, what an awesome conversation was that. I mean, this is like the 100th video of the show. And uh, it, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal that we hit this milestone. And I'm super excited for the future. I don't know, you know, where it's going to end up, what, what, what will it look like when we hit the 200th video mark, but I am very excited about it. Um, and in this conversation, there were many golden nuggets and I hope that you, you took notes because this conversation was powerful. And I think this is going to be one of those things where we, feel resistance sometimes we almost have this uh sort of resistance this friction inside of us where we're going to dark times we don't want to reach out to anybody we don't want to go and find you know uh discuss these things with other people about how we're feeling and what we're going through it's hard and we know that both me and rich have gone through those dark times and we shared our experiences with you openly I hope that added value to you. But I really want to say that this conversation, I, I believe, is just dedicated to everyone who has gone through a dark time or who is going through a dark time right now in their lives. Um, and me and Rich, we are not medical professionals. We will highly encourage you to go out and seek a medical professional if you are suffering through depression and anxiety um, or, or you know, you're, you're having those suicidal thoughts etc anything like that please make sure you go out you ask for help you reach out you talk to somebody you seek out a medical professional we're not trained medical professionals but we are here to serve you we have shared our experiences with you openly to help you and and we we just want to make sure that whatever pain we have experienced we are at least able to show you the steps that you can possibly take that will help you if you're in the same place Make sure you share this conversation with other people who might be going through dark times, who have gone through dark times. um, And if you think that they can benefit from any of this. And finally, I will also encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel because guess what? If you subscribe, all the future conversations will land in your inbox. And also, (coughs) sorry, (coughs) my throat's really dry now. I've been talking for so long. My throat's really dry. When you subscribe to the channel, you get entered into the monthly competition where you can win a chance to gain free access to my new networking strategies course. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and comment. Comment on this video or any other video that you want. I've already given you a prompt, okay? What are you doing to defy the odds in your life? So comment below, let me know, hit the subscribe button so we can grow this channel and bring on more amazing guests. I'm really excited to go into the 100 plus video mark. Um, and I will continue to come and serve you guys every single week with that guys. Thank you so much, rich pleasure to have you on. Let's do round two sometime. Thanks again. Awesome. Take care guys. Hustle hard and I'll catch you in the next one.